Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker, and as always, ready with tea. We've got our water ready to go. We've got our tea vessels that we're going to be talking about in just a minute, and of course, the tea itself. So let's go ahead and jump in. This is a uh, tea from Teance, which we're going to be talking about in just a minute. And um, let's go ahead and I'll sh talk a little bit about it as we prepare. So let's we'll get out our our tea, and this is a, this is a Dan Song which is a kind of oolong, and we are using a, a gaiwan, which is a traditional Chinese style. And I'm using my hand um, for a couple of reasons. One, I've got a smaller sized gaiwan. This is, oh, I'm going to say this is about three, three and a half ounces right here. And so I'm going to put in enough, and I want to be able to kind of see it and feel it, and I want to put in enough that I can... Uh, judge just about how much I really need to use. I want to be able to kind of cover the bottom plus a little bit more and uh, this looks like it's going to do fairly well. So that's that's enough. Our water's been brought to a very low early boil and it's been cooling here for probably about 30 seconds and roughly that would be you know that's going to use something around one 80, 190-ish as far as water temperature goes. Uh, let's set that to the side now. And what you're seeing here is actually a clay vessel, a clay uh, stand that uh, the top, the lid has holes in it and of course the lid part, let me cover that, the lid lifts off to uh, so you can empty out the uh, container underneath. And it's it's terracotta. It's um, you know very similar to. It has a a very light glaze, perhaps, uh, but very similar in uh, look and feel to a uh, you know your regular uh, terracotta type uh, pots for your, for plants actually. But moving on, we're gonna let this sit for a while. We don't want to slide it around very much. This is as we said from Teance, or I mean the spelling is almost like Seance with a T, so would you call it Teance? But I thought Teance sounds better, it emphasizes that T there aspect. Uh, this is their Phoenix Dansong uh, Pomelo Fragrance Tea. A uh, couple of, a little bit of background. Phoenix is associated with the, uh, the mountainous area, uh, and if I remember correctly, that's in Guangdong province. Uh, Dansong can, there's Sometimes there's a little bit of uh, issue as far as how to interpret that. Uh, what's often used is something that means single grove. And what happens is sometimes it means it can look like a single tree, which can, you can, which can raise issues. For example, uh, let's see, oh, the, here's what I was going to say. Yeah, there are fewer than five trees that produce this particular kind of fragrance. So, uh, at least this is the claim based on, on placed on Tiance's website. So, if you know if it's single tree, that leaves the issue of okay, then how did you get enough tea? Um, what if you cut, make a cutting, a clonal from that one tree? It has that still one tree, or is that more than one tree, or how is that counted? So, what's often used is single grove type uh, descriptors. Like I said, fewer than five trees are claimed to produce this particular pomelo. And again, pomelo is like a, uh, kind of similar to a grapefruit. Uh, usually it has a wider uh, looking uh, meat, flesh, and uh, is a bit usually often less sour, usually sweeter than a uh, grapefruit. Uh, these trees can be up to 100 years old, if not more and uh, one tree can produce roughly 10 pounds of leaf leaves per year so that gives you a very kind of exclusive or limited type of harvest uh, which leads us to a price of two ounces which uh, I did not get a full two ounce sample and I, I totally understand why two ounces for $39 uh, currently on their website uh, Tiance has their 2010 harvest in, so this has already arrived, okay? So, let's talk a little bit about this dry leaf. I'm going to let this steep, let me take, take a peek at it, okay? And then we'll uh, talk about the wet of the dry leaf, rather, for a minute. 
you get a good sniff here. Okay, first off, you are getting some kind of toasty type notes. I mean, it's warm. It's it's. Uh, I got to like a like a popcorn, but it was like a buttery type of popcorn. So it wasn't so oh ricey type, but it was more of a warm buttery popcorn type note. Along with that, at least because and because maybe if I had a larger volume, I'd be able to detect, detect more of a citrus, but I did get a light grapefruit type note coming off of this. Okay, now looking at these leaves, of course these are, they're not bald like a tiaguanin, they are uh, wrapped along the middle vein of the leaf. You're getting some nice uh, deep uh, green-brown type of colors here. And uh, let's see what else. They've actually got uh, a pretty decent amount of kind of sheen or shimmer on these leaves, indicating that there's, uh, you know, the tea's oils are, are present. So they don't look that dull or flat. Got a little bit of shine to them, yeah. I was just looking, making some notes about the shine there. The leaves do look whole. Or at least, you know, they're not having been treated roughly, so that's a positive note as well. Okay, so setting that aside, I think we've got enough here of a steep that we should be able to have plenty to talk about in this wet leaf. So I'm going to angle my lid over to the side a little bit so that I have a space for pouring. I'm also going to slide this over to the side because I, I do want to pour on this, it'll catch the liquid. And I'm going to put my, you know, my middle finger and my thumb here on the edges, hold the lid with the index finger, and raise up, and away, away we go. We are getting those last few drops drawn out as well. Usually those are very potent. We've got a nice color here. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a moment because I do want to take just a minute and talk about these wet leaves. Okay, there are some of that kind of woodsy uh, Tiguanin type, of, or woodsy oolong, I should say, more across the board of a lot of oolongs have. I'm still getting that kind of buttery popcorn type no, and it's it's you know like it's um, almost kind of that artificial type of uh, movie theater type aroma. Not a lot of uh, citrus panello really coming out yet, but if it does have a rich kind of heavy type of smell, so that's a positive note. Let's. Uh, Take a look at the leaves here for just a moment. Leaves here have are unfurling quite nicely, actually. They feel very delicate. I mean, kind of uh, paper thin. Um, stretching this one out, and it's going to do quite well. And uh, actually, a, quite a bit of elasticity there. I mean, it, and it's just kind of gently pulling apart. It's not ripping. It's got a lot of give to it, which is, uh, I don't, I don't see this kind of characteristics that often in a lot of other, uh, Don songs available. So that's, uh, that's something to note if you're in the market trying to choose a tea. Now, am I going to be able to get the second leaf open and really talk about it? Uh, no, uh, yes, uh, maybe. Uh, it's looking good right now. Oh, come on, so close. Most of it's unfurling, so that's we'll have to settle for that. And again, very ten, very uh, soft feeling, soft texture, elasticity. Uh, not as high with this one, but a rich green color on that one as well. So that uh, that bright, darker, roasted-looking color has, has dissipated into a still a bright green, a dark, uh, a darker, I should say, deep, um, a little bit of a 
green yellow type color. So that uh, covers our leaf there. Let's talk about um, maybe you're asking about oxidation colors on the side. These are uh, I believe these are claimed to be uh, hand processed. So let's kind of look here for a moment before I forget. Now remember a tea leaf the edges can be jagged and what I'm seeing here is on the very tips of those jagged points you're seeing a little bit of red. Uh, so other than that oxidation not a strong sign of that. Okay. So let's go on to our liquor. Nice uh, light honey type of color. Again, buttery type of smells. With a little bit more of the uh, kind of a citrus pomelo note coming off. One more time. Okay, still that kind of, uh, it still has that heft to it, that heaviness to it as far as the uh, movie theater buttery type of, of uh, that was the first aroma that really hit. Uh, and there was, a, there was a kind of a heavier texture to it. Um, as far as the visca, uh, the, you know, uh, the feel of it, um, it, it wasn't watery. Um, it was just, it was a good brothy feel. That's the best way to describe it. It's not, it's not a creamy type coating. It's just an, uh, a, you know, uh, chicken broth type of heaviness to it. Um, aftertaste that remains is more still of that um, movie theater butter type of buttery type uh, note to it. As the temperature drops, it is moving slightly more towards a citrusy type. Um, the astringency the, the stringency really hits on the on the up front and upper palate. This, I mean, the front of your upper part of your mouth, that roof palate area. Uh, the edges of your tongue also feel a little bit puffy, a little bit uh, astringent, dry. While the rest of your mouth still feels um, still has still feels watery. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to comment here a little bit about the uh, extension of the aftertaste, how long it lasts. And it continues again with that kind of buttery type of uh, taste in your mouth. It, it does kind of create the, a bit of a sticky saliva feel in your mouth as well, which gives it a, a little bit of an uh, added dimension. I mean, my saliva actually feels a little bit stickier, a little bit heavier. Not in a negative way. That's a that's a positive aspect to look for in in, in some teas, like this one. So, that's that's a mark going in its favor. Just got a flash. Just then, I got a flash of a of a juicy grapefruit pomelo type of note there feel and it was about in the middle of your mouth and it was kind of as if it was if you flush the tea back quickly so uh, looking at this tea as a whole uh, does it have redeeming qualities yes it has some some uh, delicate uh, soft feeling leaves as far as the wet leaf goes uh, the liquor itself it has uh, some some heftiness heft to it I should say some brothy aspects to it. It gives a nice sensation of uh, 
of a balance of the juicy, uh, even sticky kind of element in the saliva in the middle of your mouth and in the back of your th uh, upper and back of your mouth, back of your mouth, a tougher throat here. Um, yet also gives you that kind of tingly, uh, astringent feeling on the edges of your tongue, front of your tongue, and towards the uh, palate, upper front of your tongue, of your mouth rather, roof of your mouth. So it does have a, um, a lovely experience. Aftertaste, still getting some of that, uh, some of that same taste, so it does carry on quite well. So looking at this tea as a whole, I would give it, um, I'd give it a 90. It's got lots of positive aspects. Um, fully pomelo, uh, that's hard to say, you know. Uh, perhaps too, this is a, like I said, this is the tea that I have in front of me. It's probably a 2009, uh, the 2010, you know, season could have been better. Conditions could have uh, drawn out more of that pomelo aroma. And that's something that you'll have to kind of explore for yourself. Check that out at uh, Tian's. As we said, this was their Phoenix Dan Song Pomelo. Uh, keep on watching with us because we're, in the next couple of days we're going to be looking at a, a Yunnan black tea and a, uh, a Taiwanese oolong. So check those out here next time at Walker Tea Review.